again this morning. Just a second. Now I'm having some technical difficulties. Just drop the patch and scratch her coin again, and she's having some problems with that. So we need to remember her in our prayers. See if there's something we can do to help. We're going to see Sister Michelle out uh, this week. She's been a in sick for some time. <clears throat> so Nancy's still recuperating at home. The Bible camp application is still in the foyer. Uh, rides to camp. If you need a ride to camp, there's a list in the foyer. You need to uh, sign up. We need to know that tonight if possible. But you're going to need a ride. On the 4th of July, that's on a Wednesday night, normally we go down on the 4th of July and watch the fireworks. Uh, however, the uh, 4th being on Wednesday, after service, we're going to have some food, fellowship, and fireworks. And sign up for that. And if you're coming, you're going to help with that. And uh, everybody will bring their own stuff, I expect, and we'll uh, go from there. And we ask your parents, please make sure that your children bring their Bibles to uh, class with them when they come. We, uh, in their lessons also, if they have lessons, we want, uh, want our children to get the most they can out of, um, out of the Bible class. And if you will make sure they do that, we appreciate it. And this is all ages, nursery to teenagers. And thinking about what fathers need to do, we're also talking about arrows and what arrows have to have to do with archery and how archery and raising children are a lot alike. Still have a problem, y'all just give me a minute. I got one other option here. talked about how the arrow must be sharp <clears throat> and how the bow must be drawn. Tonight we're going to continue our, our discussion of this. I'm sorry you won't be able to see it, but again, the computer is updating here on the, on the podium. And uh, we're not able to, to, uh, not able to uh, show it this evening. If I pass my phone up, we're all in trouble. Okay. shooting the gun. 
And so the judges gathered together and they found out what had happened. When he pulled his rifle up, instead of, instead of getting on his target, he got on the target next to him. And he missed his target totally and therefore missed the gold medal. In fact, he finished eighth that year in the Olympics. <clears throat> While he was shooting a gun, and we're talking about arrows today, and bows, the, the same, it's basically the same thing here when it comes to aiming at the right target. We have to make sure that our aim is true with our children. And dads, the question you need to ask yourself is, where do you have your arrows aimed? You know, I, I appreciate young people and their parents, and I know there are a lot of things that are going on in their minds, things they're doing. But one of the questions that comes up is, what is your goal for your children? And I, I think going to college is a great goal, or going to work. I know uh, a man, uh, his wife used to clean the building for us. Uh, he pulled me aside one time and he said, Riley, you know, somebody has to do the work, not everybody can go to college. Well, what he meant by that, some people have to work with their hands. They don't work in an office. And there's a lot of truth to that. And in our society today, sometimes being able to work with your hands doesn't seem to be as well thought of as what it ought to be because if it wasn't for the people working with their hands, then a lot of times some of the things we enjoy just wouldn't happen. When we think about what is your plan for your children, what are you, what are you looking for them to do? Well, I want my son to be a, a, a teacher. I want my son to be this or that. And I want my children to grow up to make sure they have a living. I can recall my dad coming and waking me up every morning telling me I had to get up and go to a certain school to get that education because he wanted a better life for me. And I, I appreciate that. My dad worked some days for 50 cents a day cutting bushes out of a ditch. And you kids think about that for, for a day's worth of pay. And I'm talking eight hours. I'm not talking about 30 minutes. I'm talking eight hours. And he didn't want me to have to do that. And I appreciate him wanting me to get an education and to do the things that, that he was not able to do with an eighth grade education. <laughs> When we think about that, while that's important, the main goal we ought to have as parents is, I want my children to go to heaven. Above all, I want them to go to heaven. They may have to dig ditches for a living, but I want them to go to heaven, above all. I want them to have the best opportunity to go to heaven. That's why it's important that we as, as parents, and dads especially, make sure that we're studying the Bible at home with our children. We're spending time with them, teaching them about God, like I talked about this morning. You don't have to get the Bible out and, and read a verse to them every time you do something, but you can come back to a Bible lesson and talk about some example in the Bible and show them that God's way is the way that they need to follow. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and he's old, he shall not depart from it. That hands-on of teaching, teaching a child, if he's went a certain way, help him and encourage him to, to go that way. And that verse there, I don't believe it's talking about you teach them to be a Christian and they'll always be a Christian. No, he's teaching them about what, what are they best at? What, are, what is their, what is their uh, talent that they have? Well, help them use that talent. But while you're doing that, also be training them in the Bible also. If you think about where your arrows are aimed at, uh, look at Luke chapter 11, beginning verse 11. <clears throat> it says there, if a man asks bread, if a son asks bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, or will he give him a fish or give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? <clears throat> That's a great illustration that the Lord gave there. We think about what we can give our children. We want the best for our children in, in all things. But again, remember, let's, let's don't put the physical above the, above the spiritual. Let's make sure that the spiritual is, is what they see in their life, and that's where they want to go. Now, I want to I put a little side note there. You've got to be careful with that. you got to be careful with that. And you all know I believe in teaching the Bible and directing our children. But you can teach them and you can direct them. I've told you before of a family I knew over in Mississippi. The mother, she taught and directed her children. And she drove them to church every Sunday morning. But she never sat down and explained to them what they were doing. She never talked to them about why. 
They wanted to go worship God. She never talked to them about why it was that they needed to, to serve God. She just taught them they needed to go. And so their, their faith, <coughs> excuse me, their faith had a hole in it, basically. Because they didn't get the complete story. Yeah, they knew where they needed to be, but they didn't know why they needed to be there. The love of Christ, the sacrifice that was given, the, the love of God, the blessings of being a child of God. They missed all those lessons. And they're on ours to this day, the five sons are still not members of the Lord's body. Because simply she failed to, to instruct them properly. And so the aim has to be true, fathers. Let's make sure we're teaching our children why we're here and what we're doing while we're here. You know, sometimes we take things for granted. I, as a preacher, sometimes take things for granted. You know, I'm going to finish this sermon up here in a few minutes, and I'm going to give an invitation. And, and, and those of us who've been in the church any time, what are we expecting? If somebody needs to respond, they're just going to know to walk down the aisle. But you know, visitors sometimes don't know they're supposed to walk down the aisle. Or they may be too afraid to step out in the aisle. See, sometimes as parents, maybe we think, maybe we don't don't stop and think, well, do my children understand why we're taking the Lord's Supper? Do they understand why we don't have the issue? Just small things. You don't have to give them a 40-minute sermon on those things. Just small things helping them see here's why we do what we're doing. And help them to see <coughs> that God loves them. Well, when we're thinking about being a, uh, the archer that we're talking about, we have to say, say the aim must be true. But there's something else here, and I'm going to tell you this is tougher than it sounds. The air has to be released. The air has to be released. Now, a few years ago, we were at scout camp out at uh, Blue Heron, <coughs> out past Rossboro. And the leaders had a contest. We had a shotgun contest, and, and I got a little black in my office showing where I won the shotgun contest. And we had a, a watermelon shooting contest with a bow and arrow. And I remember how all that was going. There was a lot of racket going on. And when my arrow went through the watermelon, everything went quiet. But I will tell you, just luck, because I'm not an archer. It was just luck. But you know what? I remember waiting to release my arrows. And, and I was a little nervous about that, because I didn't want to make a fool of myself in front of all them people. And it was about to happen. But you know, when it comes to our children, when it comes to our children, we've got to realize that the error must be released. And it's just like the, the true archer. He knows that he's not going to hit his target. It's not going to happen if he doesn't turn loose the error. Well, parents, we have to realize we raise our children to be independent because we're rearing them, raising them to let them go. Now, you've only got a few years, parents. And I know y'all with younger kids, you're thinking that's never going to end. One sister this morning was explaining to me why she didn't want to start over with children because she was watching a couple children, Tara. <laughs> and she was wore out after having those children for a few hours. Our days seemed like years, didn't it? <clears throat> well, you know, God knew what he was doing when he had young people have children. And, but you think, well, you know, they're going to be in my house for so long, they're going to... They're going to be, but before you know it, you're going to turn around and there's nobody in the house but you and your wife, Dad. It, it happens that quickly. You say, well, that's going to be a good thing. Well, sometimes it is. Sometimes you like to hear those little voices. Sometimes you like to, to be able to see those, those faces again when you get up in the morning. And sometimes you like to have to deal with some of those problems that they have. And sometimes you like to... Just know that they're there and know what's going on. Sometimes you'd like to be able to, to be able to say, this is what you're going to do. But see, we can't do that. I was going to, and I don't have it on the, on the PowerPoint, so I'm not going to tell you I did, but I wanted to get a picture of, a, of Andy, of actually Opie and the three little birds. Winking, blinking, and nodding, I believe they were called. He had to turn loose. It wasn't a good day. He didn't want to turn loose. He had to turn loose. Our children, their children have to go out of the world. They're not going to remain in the homes forever. And I know you, you think, well, that's great. I don't want them to stay in my home forever. Well, I didn't either. But it wasn't, a, it wasn't an easy thing to do. 
But you see, what we've got to do is we've got to give them roots. We've got to give them roots and we've got to give them wings. Look over at Luke 15 with me, if you would. Luke chapter 15. Now, you're going to have to do this anyway because I didn't have it on the slides. But now, this is the parable or the story of the prodigal son, however you want to look at it. Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse 11. The parable. Now, in this, in this parable, the Lord said in verse 11, He said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that followed to me. And he divided unto him his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now God in this parable is the father. But notice, the father, when the son came to him and said, I want my portion. Now they could do that. If, if, they, if their father was going to leave them an inheritance, the, the younger son could come and get a portion. Now he didn't get as much as the older, older son would, <coughs> but he could get his portion and he could do with what he wanted to. You see, the father here represents God. He didn't stop and say, oh, no, you can't have that. He didn't try to guide the son what he was going to do with it. He gave him what was his, and the son left. You see, there's a lesson, dads, for us. There, there comes a time when, when we no longer can tell our children, yes and no, you can do this, you can do that, or you can't do this, you can't do that. And, and we need to work on that because we've, we've spent all these years raising them, and moms, you've helped so much with that. Telling them what they need to do and what they don't need to do. We've instructed them with God, but now it's time for them to fly. It's time for them to make their decisions. And what kind of decisions are they going to make? I can tell you right now, they're not always going to make decisions you want them to do. They're not going to make the decisions you think are best. But you see, we've got to learn. We have to let them go. They're going to have to make their decisions. Sometimes those decisions aren't good. Sometimes it's going, to, it's going to be decisions they're going to make in life that, that we know they're making a mistake while they're doing it, but we can, we can only advise. I was telling our class this morning, that my teenage class, I told them, I said, you need to find somebody, your parents are good, but you need to find some, somebody you can talk to about things when you get a little older and, and help you make some decisions. And I said, you know, most likely they won't tell you what to do. A person who's a good advisor will do this. He'll listen to the whatever it is. And he'll think about it. And he'll give some options, but he won't tell you what to do. I can recall 27 years, almost 28 years ago, I wanted somebody to tell me what to do. Come to Georgia, go to Missouri. I had 24 hours to decide the fate of my family. That wasn't an easy decision. I believe we made the wrong. But we spent a lot of time in prayer. But you see, I called several people, and I wanted them to tell me what to do. They couldn't tell me what to do. I had to make that decision. You see, if we don't raise our children, showing them the things that they, helping them learn the skills so they can make these decisions, when they get out of life, they're going to have difficulties. And so as parents, as dads especially, we need to make sure that we, <laughs> we sharpen our arrows and we aim them in the right direction. You know what? Even though we sharpen those arrows and we point them in the right direction, sometimes they're still going to make mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. We can't shield our children from the world, but we can give them everything they need to face the world. We can prepare them to face it. We can show them the way. And eventually we have to draw our bows and, and release our arrows. Well, <clears throat> when we do that, Again, some people say, oh, that'll be a great time. And you may think that now, but again, you're going you're gonna to look back and say, well, you know, I wish we had a few more years. I look back now, there, there are a lot of things I would have done differently. A lot of things I would have done differently as a father that I didn't do. But my hairs are gone. They're going to stay gone, too. Because <laughs> that's a blessing. But you know what? I did what we thought we needed to do at the time. We did it according to God's will, and we turned them loose. Now, there's something else 
If you've ever been around any, any archery competition, especially with kids, I love kids. I love to see them at the uh, BB range or the archery range. And when they hit the target, you ought to see their faces. They are so happy. They've, they've hit the target. There's a satisfaction there that they've hit the target and, and they, they've just done so well. Well, there's satisfaction in the dad's eyes too when he realizes that his heirs hit the mark. His children are doing what they need to be doing and they're headed straight for the desired target. That target's heaven. You know, there are a lot of things here in the, on the world, in the world that they're going to have to deal with and everything, but the main target we've got to remember is heaven. And don't forget, you need to start on that. All that what we're talking about today, you need to start on that as soon as you come out of the room. Because you've only got about 18 years, and that's not long. It's a source of satisfaction, again, to watch the heirs take flight. It's a sense of accomplishment to know that those little heirs will make the ultimate target, and that target's be in heaven. And so the air has to be released. We started this morning with Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5. And I want to end with that this evening. <clears throat> it says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Being a father, one of the greatest things you'll ever experience. And you're going to spend some sleepless nights. You're going to worry about some things. I know we're not supposed to, but we're going to sin and do so. We're going to think about some things. We're going to wish we'd done this, wish we'd done that. But it's all worth it when it's all said and done. And on that day when the world is over, and we stand before the judgment bar, and the Lord looks at us, and looks at our children, looks at our spouse, and looks at each one of us and says, Well done, now a good and faithful servant. We'll know for sure it's worth ever doing. Tonight, if you're here and you're not a member of the body of Christ, I encourage you to obey the gospel. You know, dads, if you're not living like you need to live, change your life. Change your life and live for God. Live for God every day of your life. Don't, don't let Satan take you away from, from doing what you know to do. Now, I, I know dads have to work. I understand that. Moms have to work too. But what happens a lot of times is <laughs> dads and moms get so caught up in the physical that before long they forget the spiritual. We've got a lot of young people here in the congregation. They need direction. They need direction from their parents. They need direction from grandparents. They need direction from adopted aunts and uncles to help them get to heaven. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's why God wants. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, why not obey the gospel this evening? Put on Christ in baptism. If you're a child of God, you're not living like you need, change your life. Repent of those things, ask God's forgiveness. If you want the prayers of the church, we'll pray for you. But understand, God loves you. Dads, I hope you had a wonderful day. I hope you had one of the greatest Father's Day you've ever had. And I, think you, I hope you reflect on what I've said today. And I hope you look at your life. And if there's changes you need to make, make those changes. 